The idolatry of Israel, impending judgment on Israel and Judah, a call to repentance, a refusal to repent on the part of Israel and Judah, and the Apostle John writes his third epistle to warn and encourage a friend named Gaius. Today on 3 and 1, as we consider Hosea chapters 4 through 6 and 3 John chapter 1. Hosea is a difficult book to study. It's heart-wrenching. Can you imagine as a man, as a husband, going to the house of the guy that your wife is cheating on you with, knocking on the door and giving that guy food and money to still provide for the one that you love, the one that has wandered away from you in unfaithfulness. And yet, that's what the Lord does often for us every single day. We all, like sheep, wander away from time to time. Sometimes it's sin. Sometimes it's just missing the mark. And sometimes it's transgression. Sometimes it's knowing where that line is and crossing it on purpose. Sometimes it's willfully walking away. And yet God still sends the rain on the just and on the unjust. Jesus said in Luke 6, 35, But love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For He is kind to the unthankful and the evil. Oofta, right? I mean, time for us to start showing more of that intense love of the Lord. And Hosea did his best to lead us by example. Not only loving his wife, Gomer, but also living in a way, a, a life of humility before the Lord. For as we read today in chapter 6, Hosea wrote out a prayer of repentance. He laid it out for Israel. He laid it out for Judah. And it stood the test of time. It's a beautiful prayer. It's found in verses 1 through 3 of chapter 6, where Hosea said, Come, let us return to the Lord. For he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and the former rain to the earth. Man, Hosea is really starting to understand the heart of God, experiencing both sides of this real relationship. And he's endeavoring to lead unfaithful Israel to repentance, to restoration, and to faithfulness. But Israel won't have it. As we read today in verse 4 of chapter 6, where once again we hear the broken heart of the Lord, where the Lord says, O Ephraim, what shall I do to you? O Judah, what shall I do to you? For your faithfulness is like a morning cloud, and like the early dew, it goes away. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. And your judgments are like light that goes forth. For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Once again, through God's relationship with Israel, we learn a bit about his love for us and what he desires from us. He said he desires mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. That, that means that God wants our hearts, not our religious obligation, not our religious duty. God doesn't want us to sow our wild oats all week long and then go into some sort of penalty box on Sundays and, and pray for crop failure. He wants unhindered, unfiltered, unforced love. And even though love is the only rational response in view of his mercy, in view of his amazing grace, it's still not something that he forces us to feel. He just continues to be faithful to us and faithful to his word. And oh, is that ever a lesson for us in our covenant relationships? Okay, what did we read in the New Testament today? The book of 3 John the one chapter little letter of third john now some have said that this is the most neglected book in the bible i mean honestly when was the last time that you read third john right well i hope today <laughs> when was the last time you took a little closer look at the book i mean studied the book other than right now but yet i love this little book now once again the letter is from 
the elder apostle, the last living apostle, John. And this time it's written to a man named Gaius, who seems to be a a dear friend, who seems to be living out his life in love within his local church, walking in the truth. The epistle starts out this way, the elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. I just love that. I would love to just sit down and and spend some time with that elder apostle, with that warm, fatherly, caring tone. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Man, John really cares for people. And what a contrast to the way he was when he first walked with Jesus. I mean, son of thunder, and now he's the apostle of love, and, and he's tenderly caring for his own children, a tender care, a tender love that serves and protects and provides. And once again, this fatherly concern brings a mix of encouragements and warnings, encouragement to walk in love and warnings against walking in pride. Now, verses three through eight contain the encouragement to walk in love. In verse three, we read, for I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. I have got no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers who have borne witness of your love before the church. If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well because they went forth for his namesake, taken nothing from the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth. And then in verses 9 through 11, there's the warning, the warning against walking in pride. In verse 9, we read, I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to have the preeminence among them, which means he loves to be first, he, he does not receive us. Therefore, if I come, I will call to mind his deeds, which he does pratting against us with malicious words. And not content with that, he himself does not receive the brethren and forbids those who wish to, putting them out of the church. Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. He who does good is of God, but he who does evil has not seen God. Man, walking in selfishness and pride, it's the opposite of walking in love. James 3.16 says, For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. And this man, Diotrephes, was definitely walking in pride and envy and self-seeking, loving preeminence, loving to be first. A man named James Montgomery Boyce once wrote this about this sin. This is the original and greatest of all sins. It is the sin of Satan who was unwilling to be what God had created him to be and who desired to rather be like the Most High. It is the opposite of the nature of Jesus, who being in the very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. And thankfully, the elder apostle John Learn to follow the nature of Jesus, taking the lowest seat of a servant, willing to fellowship face to face with those who needed ministry the most, saying to them at the end of his epistle, I had many things to write, but I do not wish to write to you with pen and ink, but I hope to see you shortly, and and we shall speak face to face. Peace to you. Our friends greet you. Greet the friends by name. Man, is this ever the the heart of Jesus? Pen and ink now. Type and typeset now. But soon, guys, shortly, face to face. And then forever.